Now there's always something that you should be doing in the woods year round for whitetails or that you can be doing. You know, let's face it, some people just like to hunt the rut. Some people like to hunt opening day, gun season, bow season, all of it combined. But if you're like me, you have a passion and almost an obsession with being in the whitetail woods year round, and it goes back to there's always something to do, and that's a great thing about whitetails. May to me is whitetail water hole month and May is a great time to install water holes. I like installing them in, them in May. Good chance that you'll catch some rain, catch some moisture, that you can get it to self-fill by the time hunting season comes. It really depends on your range. You know, about every other year, we just don't even have to fill them. But a whitetail water hole is a powerful addition to your habitat improvements when the conditions are right. And not every property should have a water hole. Just because water holes are a great improvement doesn't mean they should have them every time, just like uh, switchgrass or hinge cuttings. Doesn't mean you have to have them on your property, doesn't mean that they're appropriate. But when a water hole is, they can be an incredibly powerful tool, tool to define deer movement and for hunting over, especially with a bow. Now, a water hole to me is appropriate when you have dry bedding, and you have dry movements on the way to an afternoon or evening food source. It could be that you're focusing on cruising bucks that are between dry bedding areas. It could be that deer are in a dry bedding area. Even if you have water the opposite direction of the afternoon food source, you can still use that water on the side of the bedding area where the deer are traveling to their afternoon food source. Doesn't matter if that water is the opposite direction because once those deer leave and travel 50 to 100 yards back the opposite direction of their afternoon food source, then you might lose them to that direction. Deer are very efficient. So if you add water between dry bedding and an afternoon food source, it can be a hot ticket for a very hot spot of mature buck attraction, deer in general, but especially deer in the rut for mature bucks as they're on their way to that evening food source. Interesting thing that we found out is that with water holes, when it's not during the rut, so let's say early October, end of September, August, whenever it might be, we'll get a large percentage of our deer that are hitting the water holes in the evening because they've been sitting dry all day, eating browse, eating roughage, and they can't wait to go wash it down with water and then finally the green food source after that. In the morning, after they've been hitting green food sources all night, then they don't need to go back and hit that water hole on the way to their their dry bedding areas because their moisture requirements have already been met. An easy way to know when the rut is started in your area, in the pre-rut especially, is around here, right around October 20th to the 22nd, 23rd, we'll start getting bucks hitting the water holes in the mid-morning, mid-afternoon, middle of the day hours because they're starting to move, they're starting to get a little ruddy. And you'll notice that with the bucks over the does because the does and fawns are just sitting there. They're going back to their bedding areas, they're not really moving much, but those bucks are starting to cruise. So when you have those conditions of dry bedding on the way to afternoon food or dry bedding between dry bedding, then great place for a water hole. Now I love to install my water holes in May because again, it gives us an opportunity to catch rain, but also when we're putting those water holes in, we're installing them so that they're below the grade, they're hidden, and we simply want the deer to get used to them. So a great time to take advantage of June, July, August, September before the hunting season starts and establish that pattern of use of the water hole. And I've seen a lot of water hole mistakes where you're, we're keeping them on the ground. We've learned throughout the last 15 years, 17 years, whatever it's been, we've been putting water holes in that we do put them below ground level and they can spook deer. So when we've had them sitting on top of the, the surface, uh, the mature does in the area and especially a buck that might be coming from a ways away He looks at that water only doesn't like it He doesn't like that black shape blue shape whatever it might be and that color that you have for your water holes sticking above the surface It's just not natural So we learned throughout the years we buried them halfway and then finally we don't install a water hole now Unless they're below the grade of the of the, of the ground and that serves to not only hide them and make it a better area in a, in a more reclusive spot, a safer spot for a deer to go into, but also it collects rainwater. So we want that area to be a 10 foot diameter circle to 12 foot diameter, 14, 15 foot diameter area where it's free and clear of debris. We found if water hole is tucked in a corner like a bear bait, where you have the logs going in a corner and a bear is forced into for the perfect quartering shot, we found if that's set up that way, 
then deer are not likely to put their head down into that water hole, especially in getting down to the water where they're hidden and they're behind logs in their position where they can't see predators or anything else on the other side. So a big open area, you want that water hole in that area to be the bottom of that movement, the bottom of that, basically a giant puddle. So when that water's moving into that area, it's moving down to the water hole and that water hole represents the bottom of the puddle. Now the size of the water hole is very important. Um, we first used half cut 27 and a half gar gallon barrels back in the early 2000, um, uh, 2000s. We had 55 gallon drums, you cut in a half, we use a half barrel and it just wasn't enough. And once your water runs out and let's say you're not back to look at them for a couple weeks, then you, you lose that pattern of use by the local deer herd. And it takes another week or two to get it back. So if you're using a water hole that's too small, then you're not gonna continue that movement. You're not gonna have as much success. What we found is a minimum of 80 gallons. In my actual favorite water hole tanks are about 100 to 110 gallons. You can get them at TSC for about $75. 75 gallon or 150 gallon would be pretty decent, but it just takes a lot more digging. So we're literally, it's a three foot by four foot by 30 inch tank. And, and it's almost about the half size of this table, if you look at that. And we're digging that down completely into the ground and below a little bit below the ground surface. And it takes a lot of work, but it's really worth it. Again, you want that in a big open area. We found the more open, the better, as far as not having that brush, debris, hillside, within 10, 15 feet. Size is very important when it comes to that water hole. And what we found is about every other year, if you have that 100, 110 gallon tank, then we don't have to fill it because there's enough rainwater in there. And even if it's mid-October and there's only it's only half full, full or foot full, we've actually had deer get down on their knees and drink out of it. But bottom line is there'll be enough water for them to take a drink and with rainwater ever increasing during the fall, then you'll, you'll count on that being full. The one time I do like to fill them is sometimes during that mid-October range where um, it's right before the rut, we're just driving in, filling it, and getting out of there, leaving the machine running, the truck running, and, um, and we find that it's not a really bad intrusion. We're not talking, don't have the radio on, it's just we get in there, get out, and that's one time when we can fill it. But if you have the right size to begin with, you'll find you don't have to fill it very often. And that's the best part about using something around 100 gallons in size. Now, water holes, just like mock scrapes, and even food plots, you can have too many on your property. Uh, most 40s, two to three water holes are appropriate, especially if you have major elevation change. On an 80 acre, that doesn't translate into six. You know, it's more like three or four. And if you get as high as 200 acres, you can have five or six. But remember, each water hole that you add, you're diminishing the value of the whole of your waters, of your water sources. So if you have 15 water holes, for example, on 40 acres, obviously each water hole is not very powerful. It doesn't have a lot of value. So stick to a minimum number. Again, two to three for 40, three to four per an 80, maybe five or six per 200 acres. On a section of land, you might have seven or eight. If there's good elevation change, you have a lot of cover, you have a lot of dry bedding, you don't have a lot of water. And really make sure that you don't have too many. It's the same with mock scrapes. I've, I've been on properties where there's 200 mock scrapes, 500 mock scrapes on 200 acres. And there's so many mock scrapes that the value of one is so significantly diminished that you can't even count on putting a trail camera on one and getting a lot of pictures. So mock scrapes real quickly. I add one per tree stand, that's about it on a parcel. And, uh, and you don't want to put a mock scrape where there's no tree stand unless you're just really observing a, a uh, food plot system. Everyone asks about cleaning a water hole. You know, is it going to get too muddy, too grimy? And what I find is, and, and people have found this all over the country in whitetail areas, that a muddy pond, a muddy water hole is a lot better than a crystal cold, clear stream. Yeah, I don't know the reason. I've been told it could be that the, the shock of the cold and the fast, they, they want to drink fast. They want to go to this water hole, drink a minute, minute and a half at the most, 20 seconds. They're lapping it up. If it's very cold, they can't process that water. I don't know if that's what it is. There might be nutrients that are in the water, the smell, the taste, whatever it is, they like a muddy, dirty water hole. And so with that, 
you know, when do you clean it? Why do you clean it? What I look at doing is what's worked for me. I found that if I leave them and I leave the leaves in there and the sticks, it does become so stagnant that sometimes they don't use it as much. I have seen that. But if I rake out all those leaves and debris in the spring, and then we head into the summertime and fall, that seems to be all that you need to do to keep those water holes fresh and clean. You don't, it doesn't matter if there's mosquitoes in them, if, there's, if they're muddy. We, in fact, typically add two to three inches of soil in the bottom of the water hole so that it has that stirred up muddy flavor. And to me, what I found, that's the perfect balance between being too dirty and too clean. If you have that crystal clear clean, I haven't found that they drink out of it as much as they do when it's muddy and stirred up. So that's really all you need to do. We rake out the garden rake, rake out the leaves and sticks in the, uh, in the early part of the summer or late spring, and that's all you need to do to keep them clean. Now, one of the greatest sins, uh, habitat sins of having a water hole, is if you create a water hole and you don't put a bow stand on it. Not having a bow stand near a water hole is really bad because if you are a bow hunter, which I assume a lot of you are, or most of you, then if you have that water hole in a position where you can only shoot at it with a gun, then you're potentially taking deer away from your bow stands to hit that water hole and you're taking them out of position and so you're actually reducing, if you have a you know, good attraction for that water hole, you're actually reducing the amount of attraction to your bow stands and reducing the potential you can shoot that buck you're after because he's being pulled away from your bow stands. I like to have mine again, bow stand on the water hole between bedding and feeding, between bedding and bedding in areas that I can sneak into and get in and out of that water hole position very easily and I'm not spooking deer on the food plots. And that brings up another great point. Water holes and food plots most of the time don't mix well. Now, if you have a small hunting plot and you're living in space, then a water hole might be a great complement to that. But generally, by putting your water hole on a food plot, the food plot already offers a great amount of attraction. And so if you put a water hole with that attraction, now you're diminishing the number of stand potentials that you have in the area for actually being able to hunt different winds, evening, morning. For example, I'd rather have a water hole 100 yards away from a small food plot because then in the morning I could have a lot better chance of getting into that water hole and not spooking the deer that would be on that food plot. So as they're coming in to that water hole, that gives me an opportunity to hunt for a morning stand, possibly an evening stand if it's pulled far enough away from bedding and then an evening stand at the small food plot or a hunting plot. And the movement to that food plot is reinforced. If you add that between bedding, water hole, and then feeding, you're strengthening that line of movement. And to me, you're actually putting more deer on that food plot by bridging that gap between a bedding area that might be 200 yards away from a mature block, 250 yards, or does that are 100 yards away, you're bridging that gap between the bedding area and the food plot. And to me, you're actually strengthening that entire line by not leaving a gap of no improvements and just putting that water hole on the food source. But if you put that water hole on the food source generally, you're really lowering your chance for another extremely high quality stand. And let's face it, mature bucks will hit a water hole. We find we've experienced this for 15 to 17 years. They'll hit a water hole during the daylight a lot more than they will a food plot. And that offers a great spot back in the woods for you have a pinpoint precision movement for cruising bucks on a water hole. So don't make the mistake that I see often of guys putting a, and hunters putting a water hole out on a, a food plot and, and then ruining that chance for a really high quality stand location back in the woods. Now, if you're taking the time to put this water hole in, what is a great complement to that water hole and that bow stand location is not only a camera, to watch that water hole and to make sure that you can get a uh, really a good census of how many bucks are in the area, but also adding a mock scrape. A mock scrape is not something that I see um, bucks going 200 yards out of the way for, or 100 yards out of the way, like they will a water hole. But what I do see is that a mock scrape, they will go out of the way within a certain movement, 20, 30, 40 yards to hit that mock scrape to the point where we feel that in certain areas, every time a mature buck goes through the area, he goes by that mock scrape. 
Maybe he just sniffs it. Maybe he works it. Maybe he leaves his preorbital gland on it. Maybe he then goes to the water hole. Sometimes he comes from the water hole over to the mock scrape. But having that combination of both is a really powerful attraction in one spot. And best of all, it's a quick stop. It's not like a food plot where they're going to already. They're going, that's their daily afternoon food source. They have to get there at some point. And, and then they linger for a half hour, 45 minutes, or an hour and a half in some cases. Mock scrape is quick, water hole is quick. They're passing through. If you had stands on both sides to watch that movement, very quick stop. So while you're getting in your stand, you're getting out of your stand, a lot less likely that deer are there and you're going to spook as opposed to going into a major food source and spooking them every time you get in and out of the stand because they're already there or they're there when you leave. So make sure you have a bow stand, make sure you have a trail camera to watch it all, add that mock scrape and you can make a really high precision point of movement between bedding and feeding or just plain bedding and bedding for a cruising buck during the middle of the day. Water holes can be a very powerful improvement on your land. I've been talking about them for many years. I have YouTube videos going back for several years on water holes, using tank water holes, containers. We've been using them since early 2000s, like I said. And they are one of the most reliable habitat improvements that you can add on your land. Please take the advice. 100 gallon tank, keep them off your food plots. Put them between dry bedding and food, great place. Add a mock scrape, add a trail camera. Make sure they're large enough. Make sure they're at least 80 to 100 gallons, and I prefer 100 to 150. Make sure they don't run out. Make sure you dig them below the surface of the ground. And finally, make sure bucks, deer in general, have a lot of movement area around them. Make sure it's open. You're not pinning, pinning them into a corner where they feel unsafe. And these water holes, they can be a magnet on your property. If you have swamps all over your property, if you have a big pond in the middle where all the deer are going anyways, if you have water in the bedding areas, if you have streams running through your bedding areas, then you can't use water. And that's why when I'm looking at property in the future to buy and recommending property for clients to buy, I really like when parcels do not have a water source because these water holes can be offer such a precision, bow movement, chance of attack and bow hunting shot for cruising bucks, bucks that are going from water back and forth from food to bedding, from bedding to bedding, and really pinpointing that movement. It's a powerful attraction. I look forward to hearing about it if you put them on your property. Follow some of these tips, and I know you'll be in the right direction, especially during water hole month, the month of May. It's a great time. We're focusing on more mock scrapes going into June and July, getting our cameras back out, our trail cameras back out. And this is a great time to get a water hole in right now.